what do you recall about Jalen Suggs' uh, recruitment, and uh, when did it become clear to you that basketball was going to be the thing? And one more, sorry. Did you see the buzzer beater? I did. Un unbelievable. Uh, what a game and, and what a shot. And really happy for him. Uh, spent a lot of time recruiting Jalen. And uh, he, uh, he came to our camp and had a conversation uh, with he and his family and friends and just said, you know, I'll do the best I can to get a great evaluation of, uh, you know, how we project him out in football. And as a quarterback, we thought he was really athletic and uh, told his family that I thought he could be a really good quarterback, but if he's as good as they say he's in basketball, that probably would be his best avenue to take. And uh, glad, glad to see it all worked out for him. He's a great young man. Did he visit here? He did, yeah. He, well, he came for camp and uh, spent a right. day on the field with him, and it was, it was great. Thanks. Yeah. All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward from Letter Monroe. Austin. Hey, Ryan, we saw uh, Mitchell Melton on crutches this morning. I, I don't know if maybe he's just out for the rest of spring, but if so, what does that mean for, for that unit? And it's been pretty thin uh, for you already there. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a long term injury without getting the details with Mitch, um, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have to um, you know do a great job in developing the young guys. Um, you know, so we're going to be a little bit thin as we head into preseason. Uh, but uh, I think we have a good plan, and, and I was going to do a great job with the young guys. All righty, well, let's go next to Dan Hope from Eleven Warriors. Hey, Ryan. Uh Craig Young looked like he was working mostly with the safeties today at practice. Just uh, curious, you know, how do you think that he, you know, fits at that safety spot? Kind of what makes you guys think, you know, that could be a good role for him? Yeah, I think that uh, Craig has had a really good spring so far. Uh, I think he's finding a role that he feels more comfortable with, uh, his ability to come into the box, but then also line up at safety. He can do multiple things there. And, and that's, uh, that's exciting for us because he can cover, he can, uh, play in the box. He can be physical. He can blitz. Um, so, you know, he and, and uh, Ronnie Hickman, uh, Ryan Batch, uh, Court Williams, those are all guys in that position that we think uh, have a chance to, to do that this year. All righty, next up, uh, we're going to Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Ryan, curious, just because when Matt Jones came here, he moved into guard. Um, what are the attributes that you look for in a center, specifically as, as opposed to other offensive linemen? In what ways – he still potentially be that long term yeah uh you know matt's um, you know done a good job of you know kind of moving between guard and center because um you know harry was down this spring and uh you know he's kind of found a little bit of rhythm in there he's done a nice job and in terms of the attributes at center i think it's that he has to be able to communicate he has to uh, certainly handle the snaps and um and still make all the calls uh, has to be able to move quickly you know with the ball between his legs he got to be able to be able to then you know block the nose guard and, and possibly, uh, you know, reach a nose, which um, that's a learned trait. Uh, you have to have good quickness, got to be able to think on your, your feet and, uh, you know, process a lot of information in the run game and in the uh, protections. So, um, and usually, you know, they're not as, as tall, you know, they're somewhere in that six, three to six, five range. Uh, when you start to get closer to six, 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 seven, it gets a little harder in there for those guys that can't get underneath some of the defensive linemen. Okay, next up, we'll go to Bill Landis from The Athletic. Hey, Ryan, uh, I know, as you said, you're a little shorthanded at linebacker right now, um, so maybe that explains this, but it did look like, for the most part, from what we saw, there was kind of just two kind of traditional backers out there, and then that third guy was either a Craig or a Ronnie, maybe more of like a, a hybrid type of guy. And I'm just wondering if things are, are progressing that way for the defense, if that was just a, a snippet and, and you're playing some stuff with, with traditional three linebackers out there. Just how's that going as you're figuring out the pieces in the back end? Yeah, we have the ability to do both. We can we can line up in nickel or we can line up in base, and um, that's something that you know we've always been able to do. And um, we're going to continue to look at that and figure out what gives us the best chance uh, based on what the the offense is giving us. You know, obviously if it's eleven personnel or twelve personnel, um, and so and, and we'll just try to put you know the best guys on the field and who can do the most. You know, there was a time uh, last year and even the year before where we would put you know, big personnel in the game, we'd have four linebackers in the game sometimes based on what the, you know, the offense was giving us. So we want to have a flexibility there and uh, be able to adjust based on what we're seeing. All right, we'll go next to Dave Biddle. Dave. Hi, Ryan. Kind of a broad question now that you guys are, are more than halfway through spring ball. What are you most pleased with and what concerns you the most right now? 
I, I think it, for, for me, the biggest concern is still we just haven't played a lot of football with the younger players and, and just our development there, playing the game. Um, I am pleased with the effort. I'm pleased with how we're coming along uh, technique-wise, fundamentally. I think we're growing. I like where the defense is headed. I, I like where we're headed on offense. Um, but I still am just concerned that we just haven't played a lot of football with some of the younger guys. You know, some of the positions, you know, that, that um, you know, haven't got a whole bunch of game reps, certainly quarterbacks, one of them, linebackers, another, um, and some of the young DBs as well. Um, so those are the things that we just got to continue to, to try to put them in, in game situations and get them more reps. I felt last Friday we, we had a pretty good, you know, quote unquote scrimmage, and we'll, we'll probably try to do that same thing again on Friday or actually Saturday this week. And at running back, are you getting a good feel for the pecking order there? And if so, what is the pecking order right now at running back? I know it's early. Yeah, too, too, too early to, to uh, create a pecking order. But I, I am uh, very impressed with how they ran on Friday. Uh, I thought all of them ran really, really well. I think they're uh, doing a good job pass protection. They're running hard, taking care of the football. Uh, so excited to see how this thing progresses the next couple of weeks. They're, they're doing a good job. Thank you. All righty, next up, uh, we'll go to Stephen Meads, Cleveland.com. Uh, Ryan, kind of two things in the secondary. One, uh, I know Mario just moved into the defensive back room. It didn't look like he was out there today. Is there anything extra with that? And then also, you brought up Ryan Watson, Legend Cavazos' name, specifically back when spring practice first started. Given that Cam is non-contact and Seven's non-contact and those guys are getting a significant amount of reps, can you just speak on what type of growth you've seen from those two guys, especially since they didn't get a lot of you know football? Over yeah. That? No, I mean that that's the, that's the great great thing for them is that they don't they don't really have a choice. They got to go. They're kind of getting just thrown in there, which is great. And they are getting better because of it because they're practicing. The more you practice, the better you get. It's just the way it goes. And and they're practicing. They're out there every day. And um and and again, you know, two more weeks of that, if they can stay healthy through this, you know, they're going to come out of the spring a lot stronger and hopefully ready to make an impact in the in the fall. All right, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Ryan. I uh, can't do one of these without getting a specific question about the quarterbacks, right? Um, what, what have you seen from them so far? Uh, two practices that we've been able to see a little bit of. Uh, CJ has been taking the first reps for what that's worth. Can you tell me, tell us what that is worth and, and where, what do you like about what you've seen from them and what do you, what do you still need to see? Yeah, no, we're just rotating the quarterbacks. It changes every day and, and uh, splitting up the reps the best we can. Uh, I think they, they, they've done a decent job of learning each day. So I think that's been uh, a positive. You know, I, th I think their lack of reps is just, it's hard. They need so many reps of everything. And uh, the good news is they're, they're very eager to learn. They're taking good notes. They are all getting better in their own way. Um, so that's, that's all been a positive. Um, I wish we had, you know, 18 months to get them ready, but we don't. So the rush is on, but so far so good. And no separation yet? No, not yet. All right, let's go next to um, Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, I don't think we saw Chris Olave uh, out there in practice. Just what's the what's the latest with him? I know he went there Friday. Yeah, he's just dealing with an illness. All right, let's go next to uh, Whitney Harding. Whitney? Hey, Ryan, you've had a few days now to look at that scrimmage film. Um, how has that maybe adjusted to things you guys want to focus on this week? And then for the next scrimmage you mentioned, what will be the focus on that? Uh, same thing. I'm trying not to over overreact, and and I'd, I'd love to just scrimmage every day now after watching the the, the, uh, the film from Friday. But um, we're gonna stay with helmets uh, today. We did, and then tomorrow will be pads, and then we'll go helmets on Thursday, and then we'll pad on, again on Saturday, and just try to make sure those padded practices are really physical and really clean. Um, you know, we're gonna do some situational stuff here in the middle of the week, and then uh, we'll get into that scrimmage mode uh, and, and really take you know, tackle and, and everything like that, as long as we stay healthy here going into the weekend. After looking at it, was there something that kind of maybe stood out to you or surprised you that you didn't notice looking field level or however you were? It, nothing more than just the overall, like, man, we got to play more football. And, and there was some good things out there, but it's like, it just, you don't have Tuff Borland or Pete Warner or Baron Browning. You don't have Justin Fields. You, know, you miss these Luke Farrell. You miss these guys that you just counted on. And now you have some of these younger guys that haven't done it and really, um, didn't get a chance to play much over the last year. So, uh, you know, the rush is on to get them ready. Um, and again, not that it was bad. It's just they haven't played very much. So they just need a lot of reps. And the more we can get them, the faster they'll learn because uh, the good news is they, they're all capable. Thank you. 
Yep. All right, next we'll go to Tim May in Letterman Row. Tim. Yeah, right. You know, you're a glass more than half full, positive kind of guy. But I'm just wondering, how much concern do you have that you're not going to have probably that number one secondary together until at least August? And, uh, you know, you've touched on the experience some of these other guys are getting. But uh, considering some of the problems y'all had past defense wise last year, I just, you know, just is that weighing on you a little bit that you're not going to see that that full four or five man compliment? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, so there's, there's a whole list of things I could be worried about at night, um, and that, but that would be one of them. But the good news is that the guys who are practicing are getting better. And um, there's a lot of teams in the country that that play, uh, you know, with a lot less, you know. And so we just have to continue to coach them better, get them better. And, and, and you know, we'll have good enough players in the end. Um, and, you know, we think that the good news for those guys, they played some football, the guys who haven't been in it, the guys who, you know, are out of it. Court Williams is one that hasn't but seven has played and Cam has played. We certainly would love to have them out there in the spring right now. Um, but again, these younger guys got to step up and that's the good thing. Like they don't have a choice. They have to step up, which is a great thing um, because let's say, you know, seven and Cam weren't available, but you don't have a choice. You have to play them. Uh, just like, you know, what happened when Justin Fields declared for the NFL? Well, you got to play one of these younger guys. You don't have a choice. They got to go. And um, so that's, that's it. And, and that's college football and guys got to step up. Thanks, man. Next to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Brian, I saw one of the plays today where you had all three of your freshman receivers out there together. I'm just wondering how they performed this spring and how much of a benefit it was for them to be you know, already enrolled. Yeah, I think it's been it's been huge. I think they're uh, much further ahead than they would be when they, if they got here in the summer. And, and all three of them are very talented. Um, and they're learning quickly, still have a long way to go. Um, and the more we can put them in live situations, the better. But um, but bright futures for all three of them. All right, next we'll go to Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on SI. Uh, Ryan, you've made it pretty clear that you've got a young group here that needs a lot of reps. Can you give us an idea of the, the general football IQ, of especially the, the guys who didn't have a lot of playing time last year or didn't have spring ball last year? And certainly the guys that have early enrolled this year. What, what's the general level of IQ there that makes you think that they can pick things up quickly? I think our IQ is pretty strong. And that's something that uh, over the last year, although we didn't practice, uh, we were able to pick up a lot of information because we still did a lot of meetings, a lot of virtual meetings, a lot of non-padded practices. So, and then our young guys are pretty sharp. I mean, they're, they're really good students. They pick up things well, very intelligent. So that part's great. It's just literally going out there and doing it physically. That's the, that's the part where we just got to go and we can't make up for that. So um, they, they'll, they'll learn quickly. They learn from their mistakes fast. And uh, I think our IQ is pretty strong. All right, next up, uh, we'll go to Jeremy Birmingham, Letterman Row. Hey, Ryan, you said it a couple of times today, but the key is staying healthy. And uh, that seems like you've been on a real good run of bad luck this spring. But how does that impact the plan moving forward in these next two weeks, as far as the physicality of practices, you know, how, how, how challenging has this been for you guys, considering the number of players that have been out? Yeah. I mean, I, you have to push through it. Uh, it's just the way it is. And, and we haven't been over the top. We've only tackled once, you know, we're only going to pad two padded practices this week, uh, but, but you have to do it. You know, there's nothing else that replaces being physical and uh, you know, we have to be tough. We have to be physical. So we're going to do that. And uh, you know, it's a hard part of it, but, you know, we think through every single thing we do, every every minute of every single drill. Um, and, you know, looking back on kind of some of the things that have happened this spring, they've really been non-contact situations. So, uh, you know, feel good that we're putting them in a, in a situation to be successful. We're keeping them safe. But at the same time, we got to be able to practice. All right. We'll do uh, two more questions. First one to Spencer Holbrook. Spencer. Ryan, when you guys try to, to evaluate how you're going to replace Tommy and on the inside of that defensive line, where does that battle stand and, and who's really stood out there so far for you guys? I'm very excited about our interior defensive lineman. I think uh, Haskell's been out, but he'll be back soon. And then uh, inside, Antoine Jackson's playing as good as he's played. I'm glad that he's back for another year. Uh, veteran guy in there that you can count on. Jerron Cage is playing his best football. Uh, you know, Tyleek Williams is, is, is flash. He still has to learn. How to sustain, uh, but he does, uh, definitely flashes. Um, and, and, you know, and then actually Noah Potter's done a little bit of work inside for us. Um, so, uh, and then I think Teron Vincent, 
uh, has a chance to have a breakout year for us. It started off in the, in the, uh, in the off season with coach Mickey was gold uh, in the uh, in strength and conditioning this quarter for champions. And uh, his play has been excellent. He's definitely playing his best football and it all started in the off season. He gave himself to coach Mick. He got gold and now he's, uh, he's about to take off. And uh, if you were asking me probably the most improved right now, I would probably say Toronto up front. Uh, so excited about that. And then we also get Mike Hall coming in here this summer. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, Jaden really hasn't practiced much, but hoping to get something out of him here by the end of the spring. And if I could follow up real quick uh, with Teron, is that kind of like a, a gradual buildup for him? Because it seems like high expectations come into the program and then it just, he just hasn't been able to find his way on the field with injuries. Have you seen him kind of just the flips, the switch flip or, or how has that been for him? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I he has had some injuries here and there and, um, uh, you know, he's definitely matured. And, and uh, but again, I, I think it all started with whatever decision he made to get after it in, in, um, in the weight room with Coach Mick. That was it. Because then w- once that happened, uh, now his game's taken off and uh, excited to see where it heads into the fall. All right. And we'll wrap it up today with Dennis Dodd. Dennis. Hey Ryan, thanks for doing this. Um, sure. Was there was there a time when you recruited to knowing to the point that you know the one time transfer thing was coming, um, and what was that like? Uh, obviously, Justin needed a waiver. And do you have a philosophy on that going forward? Obviously, it's, the coaches have called it free agency, but you can get guys now too. Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, there's there's two ways to look at it, um, and and I've been very supportive of guys who have left our program. Um, I have uh, supported them in their waivers. And I think just, I think all of the guys who have left the program in the last two years have uh, got waivers to play immediately because I've supported them in that uh, area. Um, they've all left in good standing. Uh, you know, I think if, if they have an opportunity to go play somewhere else, they should. Um, I, I do think we have to be careful about uh, letting them do that multiple times though. Um, and so it's, it's tricky. It's, um, it, it is a slippery slope, but uh, I've decided to support these guys and where they want to play. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.